Okay, we'll get underway again. Julian's going to talk to us about third party incident communication. Hi, I'm Julian. For those of you who don't know me, uh, these days I work in network operations at Google in Sydney. Um, previously, I'm a service provider in the education space. Um, so, in, all, in both those jobs and in other jobs in the past, that means I'm involved in a huge amount of incident communication where I'm con I need to talk to a third party that might not be the, the owner of the end fault. They just happen to be in the path and are probably where the problem lies. <coughs> um, as usual with my talks, scream out if I say something really stupid. Um, we may not have real time for questions. This is more things you should remember than anything else. And really I could call this something rather different and it would be very accurate. So the first thing you've got to do when you're sending a third party communication, who are you? This might seem really obvious, but the problem is it's not. Most of you don't work for Google, Amazon, Yahoo. Maybe you work for Netflix. Well, that's great. I'm in Australia. Who's Netflix? Um, Gar we, you may even think everybody knows Google. We've had cases where we've had to explain who Google is on the phone to people in outages. Um, make it very clear who you represent. If your company's change name or you're known by a service name, not the company name, give that detail. Um, if you're an outsourced provider, make it clear that you, who you are representing, the network you're supporting, and make it clear that you're outsourced. You might only do that in a footnote, but please make it clear it helps the rest of us. Now, there's a bunch of technical information that you might want to include in, in that information. Assuming it's internet related, source and IP, destination IPs. Very useful. Um, if it looks to be an IP layer issue, include trace route, but I'll have more on that later. If this is BGP, say internet exchange, that sort of thing, include AS numbers. They're, for those of us that live our life in BGP, if I don't have an AS number, you don't exist. Um, if you're doing web-based issues or email, include the domain names. I don't care that your company is whatever.com if the domain that's actually got the problem is product.com. Um, and something people don't think of or aren't aware of, and in fact complain when we ask about, is Recursive DNS servers. These days a lot of web services from many, many companies use GeoDNS and similar systems to give different server farms to people on a different, in different parts of the planet. Um, there's also the whole geo load balance, the GSLB argument, which is a completely different mess. Often we need to know who the DNS server is more than we need to know who the client is to identify what the problem might be. Um, to go along with that, physical location can be useful. Some um, for people running particularly large sites or sites that aren't um, obviously in one physical location, you may need to add that. And do you have any traffic manipulating devices in the path? Google.com doesn't work. Oh, sure, but we've got an SSL intercepting proxy, and Chrome's smart enough to realise that and is uh, promptly blocking all connections. It's helpful if you actually tell us that you're doing that. I admit often there's a disconnect between those people. Um, another thing you might think is really obvious. Who are you talking to? Because you might not be talking to who you think you're talking to. Um, we, I might be looking up an ISP by AS number. I typo that occasionally. Every now and then I typo the number in a way that looks up an ISP with a similar name and I go, oh, yep, that's them. Make it clear that you are talking to someone who can actually do something. Um, so many of the things I said in the previous example, set of information, often just reflected. Um, we think you are provider of service email for domain product. We think you provide transit or DNS for these people. Um, 
circuit IDs if you've got them, although if you've got them you're generally not an unrelated third party. Um, reverse DNS entries are often more helpful than just the raw IPs, or raw IP bracket reverse DNS saves me having to look it up. And tell me what the problem is. Sending me an email saying we're so and so and you're so and so is all well and good, but what's why do I why do I why am I receiving it? And tell me what the actual problem is. Tell me that users can't load www.google.com in their browser, not just that you think they can't resolve it because pinging www.google.com is very lossy. Um, Many troubleshooting steps do give false positives over long internet stretches. Uh, trace route is a big one. Oh, you've got lost in trace route. Well, sure, because all those routers only do a thousand packets per second of ICMP and they and they hit that limit. Why do they do a thousand packets per second of ICMP? Because three thousand people decide that pinging Google.com is a sensible thing to do for their monitoring. And tell them why they care. Being able to show them that it's one of their customers, someone paying them money is having a bad time, is a good way to actually get people to fix things. Um, sadly, it's not always enough, but it can help. Uh, thank you. That was all I wanted to say. <laughs>